Hello everyone, this is Zephyr here, and welcome to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. It's finally released. It actually released almost three hours ago, but they didn't have a preload on Steam. So I had to sit there and wait for it to download, which took a long time. I'm quite sad that it took three hours. However, it's finally here. We can play it. I'm very excited. Uh, a few things off the top. I now record with my door open, so my cats will be coming in and out, so there will probably be little cat noises going on every now and then. Uh, not much I can do about that. Um, cats are cute, so, you know, it's fine. So, Iceborne. This is easily my favorite Monster Hunter game of all time. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I, of course, have played it on PlayStation 4. Uh, you may have watched my beta video, um, which was the Valkana Hunt. Um... It's phenomenal. Now, that's not to say it's perfect. There are some things that I'm not a big fan of, uh, which we'll go over as we get in, but um, I'm actually going to a convention this weekend, so I want to jump right in because uh, I don't get as much time to play today as I would have liked. So, let's go ahead and jump in. Hey! Alright, so new tool, the Clutch Claw. Uh, we're not going to watch the movie because there will be a quest to go over it. So, there's also a whole lot of changes now with Iceborne. Um, so, story progression is kind of the usual. Uh, I mean, I'll, you can all read this if you want. Um, there's not too much that I need to really read in this. I'll kind of go over things as we go. Obviously, there's new moves. Weapons have been balanced. Um, things like that. Uh, the, the biggest one right there at the top. Temporal Mantle effects have been changed and adjusted. Uh, the Temporal Mantle no longer... Uh, so, it lasts longer if you're not getting hit and causing its effect. But every time that its effect is active, a lot of its active time gets drained. Which is how it should have worked in the first place. So, it's actually not really a... I mean, it's a nerf, yes. But, um, I don't think it's a bad nerf. I think it's a logical nerf. Uh, so a bunch of changes for PC that I didn't know about. So new keyboard settings, related options to accommodate new mechanics and features. And I'm using gamepad. Gamepad shortcuts cannot be used when playing with the mouse and keyboard. Keyboard shortcuts and gamepad shortcuts cannot be used at the same time. The mouse camera control type option has been removed, leaving only the standard non-accelerating type 2 option. That's weird. Taking away options. Uh, the mouse cursor can now leave the window when playing in windowed mode. Okay, added display types for gamepad options. Button oh, for gamepad button icons? Oh, thank you, Capcom. That means I can have my... Uh, well, it's not a DualShock 4 anymore. I actually got a new controller. I got a new controller and a new graphics card for Iceborne. Um, my new controller uh, has um, paddles on it, which makes it easier for me to scroll through items because I set it to doing my left and right D-pad options. Uh, so I don't have to take my thumb off of the left analog stick and stop moving to change items, so that's nice. Um... But it it works on PC and PS4. It's just not a DualShock 4. So it's still a PS4 controller. Um, so it'll be nice to have the PS4 uh, button icons if that's what they mean. Because I kind of got sick of seeing the Xbox buttons. Because I don't use an Xbox controller. Nor do I ever play Xbox. So um, not my ideal look. So that'll be nice. Edit audio options for when the game window is not active. Interesting. Usually, if you make the game window not active, the game will kick you off, uh, to offline mode and stuff. So, it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. Major, gra major, eh, major graphical updates and adjustments for PC versions. Support added for DirectX 12 API. Okay, that might be nice. Uh, support added for Fidelity FX CAS. This is stuff I'm going to have to play with later. I don't want to do it before we get in. Display output options added. The following customization options were added to advanced graphics settings. Capsule AO, contact shadow, snow quality. Uh, maybe we will have to look at those. Please see official website for more information on the update. So I got a new graphics card. Um, interface has been added. The options menu, you can now change the size of the in-game text or in-quest control messages menu. To oh, that's all nice. Um, and my new graphics card is way better than my old graphics card so my old graphics card the vram was maxed this one i've only used a little over half so uh yeah much better graphics card display output settings i uh, select the display on which to show the game screen oh well that's nice okay that's what that is what's advanced graphics setting uh 
No, we want to leave it on high. Yes, high resolution texture pack. Ambient occlusion. Resolution quality. Well, yeah, volume rendering quality. Adjust rendering quality of volumetric fog. I never raised that, so I'll leave that there. And I don't really know what this changes, but I'm just going to keep it on high because I generally want all my settings set to high because my computer can handle it. Enable disable shadows created by your player, character, or walls. Enable disables. So if I turn it off... I want my character to cast a shadow. Will this turn the shadow... Enable disable detailed facial shadowing for your player... I mean, on. I think. If you hear that cry, don't worry. My cat is fine. He's He just makes that noise for whatever reason. Um, ah, I wish they would have just had an option to make everything max. Adjustment luminance range. 64-bit is performance heavy and effects are not guaranteed even on HDR displays. Let's just leave it on 32-bit then. I'll play around with it when I'm not recording and if it works fine, we'll, we'll turn it back on. All right, so let's do this. Uh, enabling DX12 allows for higher graphical performance. Change applies after restart. So I'll do that on the next video then, and we'll see how it goes. All right, like I said, I don't want to mess around with this too much, um, because otherwise we won't get to play the game. So let's go ahead and start. Should all remember our character here. Yes, I want a private sessions. I want a private session for sure, because we're playing alone. Oh yeah, they also changed where you can um, start off, which is nice. You'll also notice our character's using a different weapon. Uh, it's the Defender Longsword 5. Um, they were weapons they added to help people get through world quickly, but they made them a little OP because this weapon's actually better than the Taroth Sword Fire. Um, it has the same attack power as the Taroth Sword Fire when the Taroth Sword Fire has Elementalists, and it has blast damage. So, same damage, but add blast, plus it also has a massive amount of white sharpness, so it's easily the best longsword. Alright, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. A major new expedition is about to begin. A Legiana has been sighted in the ancient forest. Talk to the feisty fiver near the main gate of Astera and go on a new investigation. All right, before we do that... The field team's gathered at the main gate. Seems like they're getting ready to go out on an expedition in the forest. Hooray. All right, first things first. Grab our login bonus. Maybe. Where's my... What? Oh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne launch set. That's nice. Can I... Monster Hunter World Iceborne launch set. Iceborne... Purchaser bonus. G cool. More stuff. That's great. Okay. Uh, so, Monster Hunter World Iceborne now available. Iceborne launch set. Iceborne launch set for purchaser blah blah blah. Available until February 5th. Can only be claimed once. Guardian armor set now available for free to all players. Talk to the housekeeper to claim it, which is good. But where's my... Hang on. I'm confused now. Did I not get a lucky voucher? Or was that something... Oh, you know what? It's probably not lucky voucher rollover time. They probably finally synchronized it with console. Uh, console's at 7 p.m. or midnight for some places. It's midnight for, like, Europe and stuff. But 7 p.m. for me is when the rollover on console was. But PC was still at, like, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So I wonder if they finally synchronized it with Iceborne. Maybe that's why I didn't get lucky vouchers, but they still wanted me to be able to get my item packs. That's probably what it is. All right, so the reason I'm coming in here is because uh, we need to talk to our little housekeeper here. And actually, I wanted to show you this weapon, just because. Defender Katana 5, so... Oh, that was the other reason it's better. It gets two augmentations, not just one like the Taroth Sword Fire. So I can put Affinity Increase on it, Health Regen, plus uh, Great White Sharpness... 
and the same damage and the blast. So that's what it is. That's why I'm using it. It's the best longsword in the... Well, it was the best longsword in base world. Now with Iceborne out, it's trash. It's going to be trash very quickly. But uh, that's why we're using it. Um, for context, I guess. Uh... There's Tiroth Sword Fire, so you can see 660 to the, oops, to the 726. But with Elementalist, this also hits 726. But it's got health regen on it instead of affinity, so it's got worse affinity. Uh, and the white sharpness is actually worse on the Tiroth Sword Fire by a little bit, and the blue sharpness is quite a bit worse. So like the Defender Katana Five is just insanely OP. At least it was for World. Like I said, it's not going to be any more. Uh, our mantles are going to be... So, no longer will I really be using the Evasion Mantle. Now I'll want the Rocksteady Mantle. I'll explain that as we go, why that change has happened. But mantles now will be getting upgraded. There's quests to upgrade these so that they can carry decorations. And the boosters, when they get upgraded, uh, hit a wider area and have a greater effect. So, that's kind of cool. These will all be upgraded. These will all be upgraded. It's going to be awesome. Uh, our charms that were maxed out before, they also have another level. So there is now an attack charm 4 and a handicraft, uh, where is it? Handicraft charm 4, which are very nice and extremely important. You should know, like, for the attack charm, get, having an attack charm 4 immediately means that you have attack level 4, which means it you can just give yourself 5% affinity right there. Um, and handicraft 4 means you're only one handicraft away from max handicraft. So, like, the... It's incredible. Like, Iceborne, it it opens up a lot of doors, but at the same time, it, the meta didn't really change. Um, and that's a little sad. And I don't want to spoil too much or go too much into it. Uh, we'll see it as we get to it, but um, it's just, I, I just felt like kind of rambling about it. But, oh, right, I want to talk to our housekeeper. So let's talk to our housekeeper. How are you, Meowster? I trust you aren't hurt. Of course not. We haven't done anything yet. Uh, so claim add-on bonuses. Checking for add-on content. All right, so we get the armor set guardian, finally. No real reason to get it because I already had to, the defender armor set, but still cool to have. It looks nice. Obtained armor set guardian. All right, layered armor set Yukumo. So this is the Yukumo armor set from um, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. That is a layered armor set that we can have because I pre-ordered the game. Uh, layered armor set silver knight this is because uh i got the deluxe edition of the game and early weapon upgrade material set this is just to help people get started with making some stuff uh you can see it's iron ore maclite ore dragonite ore earth crystal monster bone and silver egg it, not a lot of any of them and uh they're all stuff that we have tons of already so take that um, all the other stuff we already have. This is one of the things I'm most excited for, the Handler's Guildmarm outfit. It's actually one of my favorite, uh, outfits for her. So let's take a quick look at that, because I need to change her outfit, because she's still in the Appreciation Fest outfit from, um, going through the, uh, fests as they were released over the last couple of weeks. So, Sunshine Pareo, I guess we haven't really shown that I bought this, but yes, here's the Sunshine Pareo, we've seen it before. Uh, in base world, this was my favorite outfit for her. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal outfit. She looks good in it. Uh, and it just kind of, you know, people always make fun of the handler. I actually really like the handler and I think she's got a nice character design. Um, so anyway, that was my favorite outfit before. However, my new favorite outfit for her, which came out with Iceborne and it is pay, uh, paid DLC, but still the Kokoto Gale's costume. So it makes her look like the, well, the Kokodo Gale from Monster Hunter 1. Um, or I guess for Kokodo Gale, it would be Monster Hunter Freedom, uh, I believe. No, maybe it was just Monster Hunter 1. No, no, because in Monster Hunter 1, the Kokodo Chief gave you your quests when you're in Kokodo. And then if you went online, you went to Mind Guard, and it was Mind Guard Gale that gave you your quests uh, online for Monster Hunter 1. However, in Freedom, the Kokodo Gale, uh, since Mind Guard was no longer a thing and everything was offline and, uh, local, uh, ad hoc, they added the Kokodo Gale to Kokodo for, um, for you to get your quests from. And so, um, this outfit makes her look like the Mind Guard Gale or, as they say, the Kokodo Gale from Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter Freedom. And, 
I just love this outfit. I think it looks phenomenal. However, for now, we're just going to put her in her base outfit because... The new world awaits. I also really like her voice actress. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't get all the hate for the handler. I think she was fun. She was very... Like, she, she has a personality. I don't... I don't mind her personality. I don't mind her, like, goofiness and getting into trouble. You know, yes, it is it is outlandish, but it's fun. And her voice actress did a really good job, I think. And I like her character model. But we're putting her back in her main outfit because we're going to be doing story stuff. And uh, it looks weird when, as you could even see when I was showing the Kokoto Gal outfit, when she's going to look for her, like, um, little monocle binocular thing and she's not wearing it. It's weird. We had that in... Uh, cutscenes when playing through my let's play of base world as well and it just made me chuckle but all right so that's all i wanted to do in here uh let's head out we have one uh one star quest we're gonna do first before anything else the field teams gathered at the main gate seems like they're getting ready to go out on an expedition in the forest yeah 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 we're not doing that yet <laughs> i want to show you by doing a quest that uh they added my least favorite addition to Iceborne. Basically the only thing that makes this game not perfect for me. There you are, Fiverr. There you are, Fiverr. I've got some big news for you. Production started on layered armor. You heard me right. The smithy's set to churn out layered armor on demand. Layered armor can be slapped on top of your uh, top over your normal gear for a fresh look whenever the mood takes you. Have a look under forge equipment next time you're itching for a change. Also helps to hide those gog forsaken clown suits. So it's kind of funny because, yes, mixed armor sets look kind of goofy, and I love that they kind of call out that fact, and that's why they're doing layered armor. So when he said this, it got a lot of people excited initially when Iceborne came out. They thought that meant all armor was going to be able to be layered. That's not the case yet. Um, and I don't know how much... Let's take a look how much they added... Uh, similar to regular armor, some layered armor can now be unlocked by obtaining the corresponding special materials. This new layered armor requires materials and research points. What is layered armor? Layered armor has no functionality of its own, but it allows you to change your appearance while using the features of the regular armor you have on. To equip layered armor, go to layered armor settings in your item box. You can also, or you can now register layered armor to your equipment loadouts. You can also save and reflect separate pigment settings for both regular armor and layered armor. Which is awesome. That's a great feature. Being able to put layered armor in your loadouts so that you don't always have to change it is phenomenal. Alright, so you can see all the stuff we already have. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it really doesn't look like anything special here. Um, however, they have been adding layered armor. Every time they do a big major update to the game, they've been adding a new set of layered armor that you can craft. Releasing low rank and high rank armor sets as layered armor and I were really hoping that they'll do the master rank armor sets as well But they haven't confirmed that yet. I can't imagine they won't So layered armor it, It's something we wanted but what the smithy was talking about is just the fact that you now go to the smithy to make your layered armor instead of going to the research commission um, So that's that's all that was uh, but yeah, so the layered armor stuff is great. I can't wait for us to get it on PC. I know there are probably mods out there that automatically let you have it. I'm not going to mod the game. The developers are working hard to give us those options in the game as a base feature. Again, the only time I mod games is if they're a Bethesda game because it's they give us the tools to do it. Or if it's something that's literally game breaking. Um, this is not... In any means game breaking yes layered right now would be nice but um i'm patient enough to wait and i do it feels good when the developers listen to the fans and release that stuff and you finally get it so uh that's why i'm not doing that all right so i'll show you the two layered stuff we got after we finish talking to this guy that reminds me. you making use of the clutch claw hunter your slinger's a lot more than just a pea shooter these days this is the quest i was talking about Perfect for taking the fight to a monster. Grapple onto the beast and clobber to your heart's content. Or till your stamina runs out. Try it for yourself. Hmm, I know there was a quest for getting some claw getting in some claw combat somewhere. Ah, here it is. One star optional quest, learning the clutch. Give it a go sometime. Alright, learning the clutch. Learn the mechanics of the clutch claw in the arena. Alright, so now I will show you the layered armor. 
Alright, so you can see we have all our low rank options, which is really not that many in the grand scheme of things compared to what I have available to me on PS4, but again, I'm not gonna... Let's not jump into that stuff. Let's not... You'll all see it when it gets released for PC. Alright, so we have the Silver Knight, which was a deluxe uh, edition um, option, so that's what that looks like. And then we also have the Yukumo, which was a pre-order bonus. Uh, I'm going to leave us in the Yukumo for now, just because I let, oh, I want to be able to use my nice new uh, outfit that... Um... Oh no, it's over here. Uh, that I got for pre-ordering this. And I do think it's a nice looking armor set. And yes, I know you probably want me to get into playing some of the game, but I want to show you some of the other cool things that we have now. So my favorite new uh, gesture is this. And you'll notice that Shadow did the gesture with us. Because Capcom has I don't I don't want to cry, but I, I'm I'll I'll bring this up. So obviously you've looked at my channel, um, and for years the banner at the top of my channel has been my cat Shadow. Uh, unfortunately this last year, uh, Shadow passed away, and um, the fact that he gets to live on in uh, Monster Hunter with me as my Palico forever is important to me. Um, and the fact that they keep adding things to make Palicos cooler and cooler, for me, it, it's a big deal. Um, and I really appreciate it. And I'll be able to show you a lot more of those things. But just these minor things like them doing these little uh, gestures with us is very cool. Like, it, it just is... It's just so cool. I love it. It gives the the Palico even more, uh, even more character, and it just makes me happy that they care so much about the, just minor details like that. So you see, we've got a lot of new, uh, a lot of new gestures. That our Palico can take part in with us. And it lets Shadow live on with me in some way, and for me that's really important. And I really appreciate Capcom doing that for for all of us players. Uh, and I don't want to go too much into what happened, but unfortunately the uh, we don't really know. Um, that's the biggest problem is we did everything we could. We actually even got him an MRI. Uh, and they found nothing wrong with him, but he suddenly started having random aggressive uh, bouts, and um, like to the point that my fiance has scars on her arms and stuff from him jumping up and clawing and biting her, and I've got scars all over my legs from him even attacking me. Um, and we tried everything we could. He went on medication for a while, and he seemed to adjust to the medication and went back to having the aggressive bouts, and we didn't really have any other options, so... Um, we didn't want him to suffer, and obviously we couldn't suffer, so uh, we we had to do what was best for him and for us, and uh, I miss him every day. I've got a little um, setup of things of uh, of that just kind of remind us, us of him. My fiance got me a little book of all the pictures that I've taken of him over the years, uh, and because he attacked us, we couldn't keep his body unless they um, cremated him so we do have his ashes in a nice little um, container sitting with that book uh, and we have prints of his paws um, so I don't want to cry I don't want to make myself too too sad here but I did figure I, I would just go ahead and talk about that because I, I want everyone to understand why the Palico stuff is so important to me um, and that's why now we can do things like the cool dance and he'll take part as well and I absolutely love it. All right, so enough of that. Um, let's go check out this one star quest. Because I, I needed to say that these are all completed again. All right, so learning the clutch. The old man said that the new world hunters need to keep innovating and our latest innovation is the clutch claw, a new feature of the slinger. Time for you to get up to snuff on how to use it. All right. Alright, 
A custom radial menu is a useful feature that allows you to register quick shortcuts to use items, combine items, use gestures and stickers, much more. Select a customized radial menu under items and equipment in the start menu to customize your radial menu. Additional features have also been added. Shortcuts can now be used in base as well as in the field. Gamepad and keyboard shortcuts can now both be used without having to switch shortcut settings, which is probably nice because I could probably set hotkeys on my keyboard to give me even more options. Uh, gamepad shortcuts. Gamepad radial menu shortcuts can now be used while using mouse and keyboard controls. Keyboard and mouse controls click, blah, blah, blah. I don't use the mouse keyboard, so I'm not too worried about that. Gamepad controls is left bumper while holding uh, the right stick to use gamepad shortcuts. You can switch between radial menus by pressing the D-pad. Uh, keyboard radial menu shortcuts can now be used by pressing an assigned key once to bring up the radial menu and a second time to use the shortcut. Uh, go to the keyboard shortcut input under controls in the options menu to choose a type uh, control type and try it out. Keyboard mouse controls use the keyboard or use the key to ha you have assigned to the keyboard shortcut slots to use the shortcuts. You can also assign keys to open each corresponding radial menu and use them to switch between the menus. So yeah, that might allow me to use things um, uh, even have even more options, honestly, uh, because I can use both keyboard and gamepad shortcuts at once. And man, there's so many tutorials. The Clutch Claw. The Clutch Claw lets you grapple onto a monster and then attack with your weapon to soften its hide or unleash all of your slinger ammo for a, a flint shot. And just so you know, the Clutch Claw is my least favorite part of Iceborne. Uh, we'll go into it as we're doing this quest. Claw Shot. Every weapon, regardless of whether it's sheathed or not, lets you switch to the slinger with left trigger and fire the Clutch Claw with left trigger plus B to grapple onto various monster parts. Note, Lance, Insect Glaive, Bow Gun, and Bow require you to switch to the unsheathed slinger mode by pressing left trigger plus the right stick when your weapon is unsheathed, which... I need to get used to that for some stuff. Know when to use your Clutch Claw. Wait until a monster is staggered before trying to grapple on. That's not true at all, and I'll explain that as we go. Um, but anyway. If you grapple onto a monster's head, you can use the terrain to your advantage to create an opening for attack. Change the monster's direction by pressing B. You can change the direction of the monster uh, the monster is heading in the control and control where you want to push them to. Unleash all your slinger ammo for a flinch a flint shot with the right trigger. When knocked back, monsters will lose their balance. If they hit a wall or fall off a cliff in this state, they will be toppled. Note, you cannot change a monster's direction or knock it back when it's enraged, which is important to note. While grappling onto a monster, press Y. I need to change those. I keep forgetting um, that that said that there's a button setting thing. We need to do that. To perform a weapon attack, which has the following effects. Softening a monster's hide, wound a specific body part to temporarily soften the hide. This also t uh, makes attacks less likely to be deflected, even when targeting hard parts. This works with the greatsword, hammer, hunting horn, lance, charge blade, switch axe, and heavy bow gun. And I believe they that in a later patch, it includes dual blades, and someone else said sword and shield. Um, softening a monster's hide is the better part of Clutch Claw. And the next thing is why I don't like the Clutch Claw. Obtaining Slinger Ammo. Hit a monster with your weapon to make it drop slinger ammo. This works with the longsword, sword and shield, dual blades, gun lance, insect glaive, light bow gun, and bow. Here's the problem. Slinger ammo is a dime a dozen. It, you can do a flint shot with stones. You can do a flint shot with those red pods or whatever they're called. You, things you can pick up in the environment. So making the monster drop slinger ammo is not that useful. However, having to attack twice to soften the monster's hide is a major detriment. So, the fact that Longsword, Sword and Shield, Dual Blades, Gun Lance, Insect Glaive, Light Bow Gun, and Bow have to use the Clutch Claw twice to soften a monster's hide actually makes the Clutch Claw relatively useless to them. Whereas the other weapons, the Clutch Claw is great because they can make a weak spot real fast. Not so much for me. It, uh, I hate the Clutch Claw. I really do. I, it, if they made every weapon soften the monster's hide with one cl uh, Clutch Attack... I would have no problem with the Clutch Claw, but because there are weapons that have to do it twice, it makes the Clutch Claw worthless for those weapons. Slinger Ammo and Slinger Burst. After performing a weapon action, press L trigger to unleash a Slinger Burst with increased Slinger Ammo functionality, which can be used in a variety of situations. Left trigger Slinger Burst examples. Great Sword. Slinger Burst can combo into True Charge Slash. Sword and Shield. Slinger Burst while evading. Charge Blade. Unleash a counter Slinger Burst right after guarding with the shield. Note, for more information on the basic, uh, on the effects of Slinger Burst, for each weapon, check basic controls and weapon controls in your hunter's notes. Um, I Let's almost never use speed on using the claw. Here's a crash course. Let's go over the basics first. Let him talk. Use your clutch claw with your weapon sheathed. All right, so uh, I actually never use the slinger burst with longsword because it's supposed to stagger the enemy to let you do more of your attacks. Um, but I've never once seen it stagger an enemy when I've done it. It generally just leads to me getting hit. That's it. Nice work. 
So that's the clutch you can claw. Fire your claw with your weapon drawn as well. Try drawing your weapon before firing the clutch claw. That's it. Nice work. Each weapon handles slightly differently, so make sure to put in enough time with each weapon to get fully accustomed. Let's move on. Hit a monster with your clutch claw to cling onto it. First, let's go over the weapon attacks you can use while clinging to a monster. The type of attack depends on which weapon you have equipped. The one you're wielding now will make the monster drop slinger ammo. Before we move on, let's get the exact timing down. This is going to be important, so pay attention. If the monster is moving, you're going to have a tough time landing an attack while clinging on. Attack the monster first to make it flinch, and once it stops, hit it where it hurts. Okay, let's see if you can pull this off in practice. All right. Pay close attention to the monster's movements and land your attack. Ah. Clearly, I... I'm out of practice. All right. So... They added a new flinch to monsters, and you'll see it in a moment. That's the one. So now, this is supposed to be a free... That's not what I meant to do. Right, so, I forgot he wanted to do the weapon attack. Nice work. Slinger ammo dropped by monsters is extremely potent. Make use of it whenever you can. So that's a new stagger that... Ugh. That's a new stagger they okay. added. Ugh. Next we're gonna try to hit the monster's head while clinging on to it. It depends on the monster, but there are usually several body parts you can cling on to. You can move to different parts of the monster's body while clinging on to it, but you'll consume a lot of stamina. Make sure to get your aim right before going for a particular body part. You'll need slinger ammo. Go find some and load up. Attack the monster first to make it flinch, and once it stops, hit it where it hurts. So that new flinch is a free clutch claw attack. It's literally there for you to clutch on, and actually the stagger will last longer if you do clutch on. So that's that's why that new stagger's been added. Um, also, you don't have to wait for a monster to be staggered to clutch claw them. It's just easier because they stop moving. When they're moving, if they do an attack, you'll probably fall off. Also, he said, pay close attention to where you're aimed before you jump on. Um... Yeah, that doesn't generally work because if the monster's moving, you you'll, they'll almost always turn and you'll get stuck on something you didn't mean to. Or sometimes you'll aim for the head, but you'll still somehow end up on their arm. It's horribly... It, it's not optimized proper properly. And it, it's honestly... I, I really don't like the clutch claw. Um, it oh, It's just bad. There was something else I was going to say, but I don't remember what it was. Let's get them closer to a wall so we can do a proper flinch Attack shot. The monster. A hunter's got to make their own opportunities. There, stop moving. Grapple on. Now, use your slinger. That's it. Nice work. There you go. Knock it down. That attack will consume all of your slinger ammo, but it can knock back monsters. Let's move on. Not completely true, it'll use all your slinger ammo. Now let's look at how to attack with your clutch claw. You can use this attack when clinging onto a monster's head. Attack the monster first to make it flinch, and once it stops, hit it where it hurts. So I remembered what I was going to say. Uh, there's never a reason to move around on the monster when you're clutched on because you burn through stamina so fast and they're probably just going to knock you off anyway. Um, so wherever you land, if you don't land on the head, just do a, a, a weapon attack and try and temp tenderize the part. There's no point moving around. Um, and what I was saying is if you get the slinger capacity up skill, uh, you won't burn through all of your slinger ammo when you do the slinger attack, which is actually quite nice because uh, it makes slinger capacity an actual useful skill. Because instead of having to collect slinger ammo all the time, you can just uh, collect it once and then you won't go th burn through it all so fast. This consumes a lot of stamina, but it allows you to make the monster change directions in quick succession. Yep. Uh-oh. Looks like the monster is getting angry. 
When enraged, you won't be able to knock back monsters or get them to change course. Any monster becomes a threat if you're angry enough. Keep a close watch. When angry, monsters will be a lot more aggressive, so it's best to keep your distance for a while. Looks like it's calmed down. Let's move on. Right, now let's put everything you've learned so far into practice. This attack makes use of your surroundings. Fire your slinger while clinging onto the monster's head to make it slam into walls. This will be a great opportunity to really wail on the monster. This is your time to shine. Yeah, it lets you uh, wail on the monster and it does a ton of damage. So it's actually a really good attack. But, again, because of the mechanics of the Clutch Claw, I really don't... I, I'd rather just not have that and instead... Uh, just have the... Like, I'd, I'd rather just not have the Clutch Claw even if that meant no longer having the, the slinger burst thing. Because it just... Oh, I enraged him. What a dick. I gotta wait for him to get unupset. Um, but, like, aiming the clutch claw, landing on the right spots, and not it not being a frustrating mess is why I really uh, would rather just not have it. Like, it's, it's cool to be able to do that and do all that damage, but... Always keep an eye out for ways to use your environment to your advantage when hunting. That works. That covers everything. But having that extra damage and stuff it just isn't worth it. Especially since the entire game is balanced around the Clutch Claw. Which means... I mean, you don't have to use it. I don't really use it a lot. Uh, not for tenderizing, at least. I do do the, the Slinger Burst a lot, but... Um, I don't use a lot of the Clutch Claw mechanics a, lo a lot because of how frustrating they are. So, my hunts just take longer than they need to. Uh, not a ridiculous amount, uh, because I'm still good at the game, but um, I could be faster if I enjoyed the Clutch Claw more and probably used it better or just used a weapon that um, would tenderize in one, in one go. Now, you also saw I did my EI... Uh, Slash, one sec. Oh, as I mentioned, there are new moves for all the weapons. So the longsword, if you didn't watch my beta video, longsword has the uh, special sheath that leads into the EI slash and the spirit EI slash, which are both very cool. Um, they're similar to the foresight slash in that uh, if you time them... Ooh, clutch claw neophyte, my first... Iceborn uh, trophy. Uh, they're similar to Foresight Slash in that if you time them correctly when a uh, monster is attacking you, you won't take damage or you'll take minimal damage depending on where in the window you are and get bonuses for it. Um, so, like the Spirit EI Slash, if you do it right, you will. The field team's gathered at the main gate. Seems like they're getting ready to go out on an expedition in the forest. Right. So, if you the Spirit EI Slash, if you do it right, um, you will not take damage, you'll do a powerful attack, well, you do a powerful attack no matter what, but you won't lose a level of your spirit gauge, and the spirit EI slash can be um, comboed into the helm breaker, so if you can do a spirit EI slash, not lose a, a gauge, because normally, if you don't time it right, you'll lose, you'll go from like red to yellow, yellow to white, white to nothing, um, similar to the helm breaker, but what you could do is if you do it right, you'll hit the monster, not take damage, not use as a spirit gauge level and then be able to combo into the helm breaker that will also be at red gauge and it can be a ton of damage it's very difficult to do there's not a lot of openings for that entire combo uh, but it's still very cool the normal ei slash is just nice because if you time it right you won't take damage but on top of that um even if you just do it as part of your combo uh it, it does what the helm breaker does in or the helm splitter where you uh your spirit gauge automatically recharges so that's nice all right, so it's finally time to move on. There's no one else to talk to, so let's uh, let's talk to them and go out on this expedition. Oh wait, I probably have like no items on me because I was searching for endemic life. You can see I was still searching for fish, which I did find a great burst arowana, but I still didn't get everything, so we still have that guild card background. Sorry. Um, manage items. Let's take our standard loadout.
I love that you can choose if you use your radial menu loadout as well. Did it reset my radial menu? Oh, it did. Even the... Oh, you... I thought I had saved it. Oh, wait, I did. That's the HQ settings. Oh, thank goodness. That scared the crap out of me. Oh, okay. All right, it's fine. It's fine, guys. It's fine. Actually, can I change this already? We're going to get new first aid meds. Yes, we can. First aid med plus. We'll be getting those from uh, quests now. All right, now we can move on. Let's get going because we're already 43 or like 40 some minutes into this video and I haven't done uh, really much. We've just been talking a lot. Yo. Of course I knew you'd show up. The smell of something exciting in the air and you and the handler of your you and that handler of yours following the scent to the source. Let me read this again. That didn't seem to make sense to me. The smell of something exciting in the air and you and that handler of yours following the scent to the source. It feels like that's missing something. Hmm. Well, anyway, we got word that a Legiana was has been sighted in the ancient forest. We've never seen one outside the Coral Highlands before. Sounds uh, sound like something you want to check out? Something's going on in that forest. <laughs> Bet you dinner this ain't just some random happening. Talk to the feisty viver and head for the ancient forest to begin Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Well, we talked to him already. Ready to go? Ready to go? Let's head to the ancient forest. Go on an expedition? Yes. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this, guys. Oh, yeah, one other nice thing that's been added is penance. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit. Once I know that, I'm not going to be interrupting something. Because pendants are also really cool. There's a Legiana in the ancient forest, and nobody knows why. I rounded up all the eyewitness data available. Follow me. Legiana tracks. No mistake, it's really here. Does the forest seem off to you today? Let's keep going. It feels a little weird now that the Elder Crossing investigation's done. It's exciting too, though. I wonder what comes next. So quiet. What gives? I haven't seen so much as a buck. Where are the birds? Maybe something's got them all spooked? Those tracks were headed west, partner. Wonder if the next investigation is going to be super long, too. I know I plan to stay here for at least another decade. They say the Elder Crossings happen once every 10 years, right? We can't really call our investigation complete if we don't stick around to see for ourselves. Pretty sure the First Fleet has the same idea. I mean, the First Fleet's been here for four decades already. No Aptanoth either. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. It's gotta be up ahead. Plus, that gives me time to, uh... I've got my own little investigation to do. That's part of why I wanted to come to the New World in the first place. Ooh, which reminds me... You never told me what your reason was. Hold on. Looks like we're close. Guess story time will have to wait. Legiana tracks here too. Oh, my. 
many. Where are they going? Hey. Hey, do you hear that? Legiana filled the sky as they departed the ancient forest, heading out across the open sea and marking the beginning of the next chapter for the research commission. Yeah, so pennants are little decorations you put on your weapon that lets you... They're not nothing huge or anything, but they let you just kind of customize a, you know one little thing the way you want. Uh, and they're fun. Now that everyone's here, let us begin. We have a serious topic to discuss. As such, I've assembled the Fleet Masters, along with the First Fleet Field Team members I've been able to reach. Now, I'm sure that you are all aware by now that Legiana have been leaving the New World in droves, flying far out into the open sea. Director, please take it from here. Gladly, sir. Firstly, as a species, Legiana are not known for long-distance migration, nor for abandoning their primary habitat. Why they've begun crossing the ocean is an ecological mystery. Either something has begun to affect the biological nature of the Legiana, or they've been driven out by some change in their habitat, some anomaly that has stimulated them to migrate beyond the sea. Beyond the sea? <laughs> Commander? <laughs> Just some deja vu. <clears throat> so, thoughts? Ha! Do you even need to ask? I can tell by that fire in your eyes that your mind's already made up. It's not just you, Commander. I think we've all gotten tired of following the same old routine lately. Good. I hereby declare we focus all available resources on investigating this Legiana issue. Effective immediately. Oh, now we're talking! <laughs> Commander, sir. We were thinking that if we follow the migrating Legiana, we should be able to discover somewhere to land. Like a new island, even. So, we go by ship. Or, better yet... Something a little more... stimulating? Air travel's our specialty, after all. Yes, the Third Fleet's airship would allow us to spot the best landing area, and help us get an idea of the surroundings. That settles it, then. I'll be choosing who to dispatch, but I need you to stay and watch over everyone here. I'll need hands from the provisions and technology divisions. We'll need your help to set up a forward operating base. And you two, tell your fleet to ready themselves. Once your preparations are complete, assemble at the council table. We may not know what lies out there, but that's no reason to falter. Just like the star-guided youth of legend, we must always press on. Good luck, everyone, and may the Sapphire Star light your way. All right, then. Dismissed. Master Rank has been unlocked. Master Rank 1. Master Rank has been unlocked. The story of Monster Hunter... The story of Monster Hunter World Iceborne will unfold as you complete Master Rank quests and expeditions, which will also raise your Master Rank in turn. As your Master Rank increases, you'll gain access to new quests that pit you against increasingly tough challenges. Your Hunter Rank cap has been removed. The following assignments limiting your Hunter Rank will be marked complete. Beyond the Blasting Scales, Thunderous Rumble, and the Highlands. Well, I already... 
already had that done. No, new optional quests with the same content as the above two quests have been added. You can find them in the low rank, high rank category of the optional quest list. It's time for the next big step. Head to the council table when you're ready. Alright, so we're going to end the video there. Uh, the next video will really be taking off into Iceborne. Um, I wish I could have done more, but uh, unfortunately, we, you know, we're doing... Going over a lot of things and looking at a lot of things, and it just takes time. Um, so a few more things that are now added. So we mentioned penance. Another one is all endemic life now have sizes and they all have mini crowns and large crowns. So there's even more endemic life for us to collect now. So that's very cool. This expansion adds so much content and so many things to do. It's phenomenal. So I'm excited to be playing through this and I'm excited for all of you to go on that journey with me. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please feel free to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell icon to get email updates when I upload new videos. And of course, you can leave any comments or suggestions in the area below the video. Uh, I know I mentioned pennants. I don't have any yet, so I'm not going to go over them too much. Just know that they're a nice little decoration. Once we have one, we'll uh, go over them more. Uh, I will mention for those of you who are watching this and are just starting Iceborne yourself, uh, you do get a pennant for being in master rank and helping people in low and high rank. Um, so that there's actually three pennants related to doing that, and all you have to do is just keep helping people in low and high rank, and once you hit certain thresholds of number of times you've done that, you'll get the pennants. So um, just something for you to know uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, however, that is all I have for you today, so thank you so much for watching. And as usual, this is Zephyr, signing out.